in detail in there. Thank yeah. you very much. Brilliant. Uh, Lindsay Carswell. Good afternoon, all. <laughs> You've seen me before on numerous times, but this time I want to go over the complaints procedure. This is something I have asked numerous occasions over the last 20 years, because the problem I had with my unit started over 20 years ago. The building I purchased did not comply with the building code as it was then. The plans as submitted to the council and approved did not comply. Um, a number of building inspections that were carried out were zero. The building was signed off as being code compliant by a senior building inspector who never came and looked at the building and simply signed it off as project complete. Building is riddled with non-compliances. I've done a lot of research into how the building code works and I'm quite appalled at what happened to me. The council, as far as I was concerned, the building services unit was completely dysfunctional. What was even worse was the response I got when I tried to make a complaint. I got the total runaround. People would say one thing to me and do the complete opposite. I was given advice which was totally inaccurate. I went through mediation with the council. The person from the council had obviously never heard of acting in good faith. I've never known a person to lie so convincingly. It took me ages to work out some of the things that he said during that hearing, which were a total pack of rubbish. Then we, a few years later after all that, I gave up, which of course what the council wanted me to do. Then a few years later we had an earthquake, and during a hearing into the collapse of certain buildings, it became very apparent to the government that the building services unit here was in fact dysfunctional and they, were replaced. they had a commissioner appointed to oversee everything. So I wasn't joking, there were problems, serious problems. But the other thing I want to say also as to you is that as councillors, I've come along and watched a lot of meetings, I've been involved in a lot of uh, areas and I'm also concerned about the fact that the staff give you the runaround. I remember a few years ago, there was all that talk about um, needing a balanced budget. It was about five or six years ago now. And it's claimed that you had to have one, that the auditors had said that if you don't sell off city care so you can have a balanced budget, there will be no audit report. That was absolute rubbish. I wrote to the Auditor General and they came back and said, no, they don't have to have a balanced budget. But your staff kept telling you, you did. I remember a few, couple of two or three years ago now, in one of the old subcommittees, where I went along and made a submission. A motion was passed. It was never recorded. The staff didn't record motions by people, from members of the public coming along. Thanks, Lindsay. That's, oh. um, no, I mean, it's, a, it, it's appreciated. I understand that there's um, a lot of history and a lot of things have happened in the past and a lot of things have changed as well. No, they haven't. And uh, I'm assuring you that a number of things that you have referred to in the past have changed. And, uh, and the, the way our building consents um, department works now is, is up to the standard of best practice in the country. Um, it had lost its accreditation for a number of reasons, completely unassociated with the um, Royal Commission of Inquiry. So, but, but leaving all that aside, I understand the point that you've raised. You've made your point well, and um, I'd like to thank you very much for putting all the well, effort into just one making the submission. You need to have an independent place mm -hmm. procedure. Thank you. There, there, there are independent processes in place now in relation to building consents. There are, and it's uh, you can get a determination through MB, remain, which you never used to be able to do. I remain unconvinced. <laughs> Good. No, that's fine. Ditto.